If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to sew along with you uh, this bag. This is from the pattern, uh, McCarthy Threads pattern, the Mercury Backpack. But, I have done some modifications to this one. Now this one here, I made for myself for my new travel slash work bag, but I didn't want it to be exclusively a backpack. So, I modified a few things. So I made the handles, I added in some connectors and I made it so the handles will drop down. I added in a crossbody strap. So what that means is in the pattern, this part could cinch in. I took away that cinching part on either side. So the tops are left open, but I am perfectly fine with that. It's just a little bit there. Um, and added a crossbody strap. And then rather than doing backpack straps, I did a crossbody strap and added in an O-ring up here. So the crossbody strap can act as your backpack strap when it's at its fullest length or whatever, it's completely body inclusive or the crossbody strap. So it's like a handbag, shoulder bag, crossbody bag, and a backpack in one. Let me show you some of the other things in this bag that actually were part of the pattern. So this is a beautiful design. You have in typical car threads fashion, her, her um, pockets that she's known for, we've got a hidden zipper pocket under this flap. We've got a hidden pocket, zipper pocket right there. Can you see the zipper there? On the back, we have another zipper pocket as well as a luggage sleeve. This could also be closed off to become a slip pocket. This bag is so big. On the inside, I added in an extra bottle holder. That way, when I'm traveling, they're down the middle there. When I'm traveling, I can have my water bottle as well as my coffee travel mug. I have the two slip pockets on this side and a zipper pocket. And on this side, we have a large laptop sleeve. So I have a 13 inch MacBook Air and it looks small in here. So I'm pretty sure you can get a fairly good size laptop in there. And it just, it will be able to hold all the things. Perfect carry on size, perfect work bag size, super classy. I just love it. Okay, materials I use in this bag. My exterior vinyl is my current favorite. This is the Distressed Patina in light pink from Galaxy Customs. It's just beautiful. I am absolutely loving this new line of vinyls. Um, my lining fabric is the Moda Sheen. Um, it's a silver color. It's got glitter. You know me. I love glitter. Um, all my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My zippers and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. Um, I added in purse feet as well. Uh, I show you how to do all the modifications I did in this. Um, the only other thing I did different is in the pattern, it calls for a deck of a light for your main stabilizer and you can absolutely do that. I decided to go with foam. So I show you in this tutorial how I substituted in a sew-in foam and how to keep it out of the seam allowances so it doesn't get too thick or what have you. Um, with this being a work bag, and with my laptop and everything being in there, I wanted to make sure I definitely had the softness to protect everything that will be inside this bag. So I switched to foam, plus I'm a foam girl. Um, so I use the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. In my bottom, I do have some Decaville Heavy, which I got from Emmeline Bags. What else, what else, what else? Um, I use a little bit of a scrap canvas for my interior uh, slip pockets, and that is from um, Sam Fabrics Creations. Uh, so yeah, things I did different. I added in a crossbody strap. I took off the cinched in parts. I made it convertible. Didn't do the backpack straps. I did the crossbody strap thing that I like to do. I made it so my handles flop down, so they're out of the way. And besides that, not too, too much different. It was an amazing pattern. Truly loved making this. So. How about we get to making this bag? So you're gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape, a slider, two swivel clasps, optional 
four strap ends, an O-ring, four rectangular rings, five number five zipper pulls, four rectangular er, triangle rings, optional six purse feet, a zipper end, and your nameplate. Okay, so I'm going to be using foam as my main stabilizer. This is my crossbody strap slash backpack pieces, my two handle pieces, my lining zipper pocket pieces, my lining slip pocket pieces, nine connector pieces, your top panels, lining and exterior, your zipper flap pieces, your front bottom pieces, uh, lining and exterior, your back panel, your exterior and two lining pieces, your two connector triangle pieces, they're not triangle shaped but they will be, two strap strips, two exterior and two lining side panels, two exterior and two lining side pocket panels, your bottom pieces, exterior and lining with decoval heavy outside of the seam allowances, one or two bottle sleeve pieces, your laptop sleeve, exterior and lining, your trolley sleeve piece, and two zipper end pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my crossbody strap and my handles off camera. If you need a class on how to do that, it's in the Bag Makers Basics play, uh, playlist, link down below. Okay, so now I'm gonna make all of these connectors. So we're gonna take the extra connector pieces that we had cut, and I'm gonna go ahead, I've already marked a center line. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape down the center and I'm going to fold the long ends into that center line like so. Once you've done that for all of them, we're gonna take two of the D-rings and two of the connector pieces. We're gonna put some double-sided tape about a half inch or so up from one of the bottom short sides. We're gonna take our D-ring or triangle rings. We're going to slip it onto these connectors. We're gonna fold it down about an inch and a half from the rectangle ring and fold the bottom side up to meet it like so. Secure with the tape. I'm also gonna go ahead and mark a half inch, half to a quarter inch line down from the fold where our triangle ring meets. You can set those two aside for now. I'm also gonna just put a few clips here just to make sure that tape doesn't give way. Now for the other connector rings or connectors, we're going to go ahead and top stitch down the folded edges with an eighth of an inch. Along the bottom short end of all of them, we're going to put a little bit of double-sided tape, put whatever connector we have on and bring the short ends together, wrong sides together. And that is that done. Okay, and now we're going to work on our triangle uh, connectors here. So I have two of my D-rings here. I'm marking down on the side connector pieces as per the pattern measurements, applying some double-sided tape along that line, and folding that long side into the line like so. Now for this first one, we want to find the center, and just to the right of that line is where we are going to place our D-ring connector. I'm going to just measure down um, as per the pattern measurements and mark a line so I have good placement for where this is going to go. Again, find that center again. And then I'm going to take this D-ring and I'm going to line up that folded edge with that line I just drew to the right of that line, fold this wrong sides together, match up the raw edges and the folded edges and secure with clips. We're going to do the same with the opposite one, except for we are going to line the D-ring connector up with the left side of the center line. We want these to be mirrored to one another. So again, to the left side, line it up just like we did with the first one, fold in half, and secure the edges with some clips. Now 
Now the finished edges, we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch them with an eighth of an inch and then a quarter of an inch for both, just along the finished edges. Do not do the raw edges. Once that's done, this is what that looks like. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from corner to corner like so. So um, in between where we have stitching and where we don't. And we're going to go ahead and cut it along that diagonal line, cutting away those raw edges like so. Same with the opposite one, but it will be mirrored from corner to corner to make triangle rings. Again, double check that they are mirrored to one another, which they are. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to put a rivet in like so through all the layers, kind of fold this back and I'm going to trim up some of that connector underneath here like so, just to reduce some of that bulk for later. Go ahead and set those aside for now. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we are going to prepare our bottom exterior piece. What we want to do is from each of the four corners, we want to draw a half inch square, just like so, from all four corners. On the wrong side, of course. And now purse feet are not in the pattern, but I am adding them in, so I will share the measurements of where I I put them in. Go ahead and mark your centers of the long sides and the short sides of this exterior bottom piece and you can also see that I have the decable heavy fused on outside of the seam allowances. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure two inches in from the short sides and one and a half inches in from the longer sides and then I'm going to put two centered as well nice and centered one and a half inches up from the long side. Go ahead and install your purse feed at these marks. If you need a class for that, I have that down below in the description. Okay, so that is ours done. I like to put some duct tape on the back of my prongs for extra security. Okay, so now we're gonna work with our front top panel exterior to put in our zipper pocket. So I've already marked my top and bottom centers of my exterior piece. You're going to measure down on the right side of this as per the pattern measurements with an erasable pen. Mark your centers. I've already gone ahead and transferred my zipper uh, pocket lines as per the pattern. We're going to put these right sides together, line it up along that line, nice and centered. Now make sure you are definitely following the measurements for the uh, size of the bag that you're doing. I actually did this wrong the first time, which I'm doing here is I did it for the small bag measurements when I was making the large bag. Go ahead and along that center line where we'll be cutting away, go ahead and clip that together and then sew along the straight edges like so. Now in between that center line of where the zipper pocket's going to go, I'm going to start cutting it with my rotary cutter. And when I get to the V's, I'm going to cut them out with my scissors to just barely where the uh, threads started and stopped like so without cutting the threads. Then go ahead and bring this lining pocket through that hole wrong sides together. Make sure you wipe away your marks so it does not stain your exterior fabric. Pull these through like so, wrong sides together, and give those seams a really good press from the wrong side. Careful not to burn your vinyl if you're using your vinyl. Now that that's done, I'm going to take my uh, zipper pocket flap here. I've marked it as per the pattern measurements. I'm going to fold it in half wrong or right sides together like so. So this is our zipper flap. And then we're going to sew down the sides. Once we have that done, I'm going to just trim up these corners slightly without cutting my, my uh, stitching and turn this right side out, poking out those corners nice and sharp. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and secure that raw side with some clips just to hold it all together. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to baste that raw edge and top stitch to three finished edges. Now along that raw edge, find your center with a small snip. I have my zipper tape here already with my slider on or my um, zipper pull on it. I'm going to find the center of my zipper tape and mark it on the front and the back within the seam allowances. Okay, so I got my zipper pull going to the left and right side up. I'm taking my zipper flap also right side up, lining up that center with the top side of the zipper tape, clipping in place. Go ahead and baste this in place. Now that that's done along the wrong side of where we started uh, to put our zipper pocket in, I'm going to mark as per the pattern measurements above the top of that rectangle. And that is gonna help us place our zipper nice um, where it needs to go. So I did that along the top and the bottom. I'm also gonna mark the center. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape here to help hold this in place right along the um, bottom, within an eighth of an inch above the top and bottom of that zipper pocket opening. Okay, so now we are going to take our uh, zipper and we're gonna put it wrong sides up like so and we're gonna line it up nice and centered with that top line and place it in place, stick it down. Gonna flip this over and we are also going to go ahead and line up kind of pull that pocket out, or that zipper flap out like so take off the paper of the bottom um, double-sided tape and then line that up nice and even along the bottom side of our zipper tape Once you're satisfied with that, what we're going to do is we are going to top stitch around that rectangle. So it's gonna look a little different than it usually does. We're gonna go along here and all along here. So we're kind of going above where our zipper flap is. Um, I'm gonna pull my tails long and tie them off in the back. If you don't do this, make sure you back stitch well at start and stop. Okay, so this is what that looks like, it's so fancy. Now what we wanna do is trim up our zipper tape like so, and then you're gonna fold the bottom edge of our zipper lining up, right sides together, and we are gonna match it up along the other side like so, and clip the lining pieces together, making sure you're not clipping the exterior into that. And then we're going to take this to the machine and uh, making sure our exterior is out of the way. We're going to start at one of the folded edges. So up here, across here and down here to close up that zipper pocket.
And this is what that looks like all done. We have a finished pocket. Now we're gonna work on the bottom pocket panel. So I got my um, zipper ends here. I have kind of bifolded them, folded them to the center and then folded them upon themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them on the end of my front bottom zipper. And I'm gonna to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure both sides are caught. Go ahead and trim up those zipper tabs. Find your centers, mark it on the front and the back of this within the seam allowances. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my exterior piece. I've marked my top and bottom centers, measure down and make a line with an erasable pen as per the pattern measurements. Dexter says hi everyone. Once you have that line drawn, you're gonna take some double-sided tape or use clips, whichever you prefer based on your uh, machine sensitivities. I'm gonna put it on the right side of the top. And I'm gonna take my zipper with my zipper pull going to the left, it's right side or wrong side up. So we're putting these two right sides together and you're gonna put this nice and centered along that top like so. Now I'm gonna take my lining piece, which I have my centers, use clips here or tape, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape along the right top side of the lining piece. And I'm gonna put this right sides together, nice and centered, sandwiching that zipper tape. So your exterior is right side up, your lining piece and your zipper are right sides down. Go ahead and sew across here with the seam allowance in the pattern. Changing into a zipper foot helps you get a nice and accurate seam allowance for a nice straight zipper. Now that that's done, go ahead and flip your lining up like this. Give it a good finger press and then top stitch just through the lining. Do not top stitch through the exterior to hold that seam in place. That looks like when that's all done, now you're gonna fold these wrong sides together and just pull it nice and tight down away from the zipper so we can work with the unsewn side of the zipper. Hold it with some clips. Now on the other um, front pocket lining bottom piece, whatever it is called, we're gonna use some more double-sided tape or clips here. And with the unsewn side of the zipper right side up, we're going to put it on the lining piece right side up as well and stick or clip it down. Again, making sure the other Panels we work with are out of the way. Now along the bottom of this front top panel, not the top, the bottom, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape again. Again, you can use clips here if you prefer. And we are going to put this right sides together along that unsewn side of the zipper, matching up that center and sticking or clipping it in place like so. Go ahead and sew across there with the seam allowance stated in the pattern. that's done you're going to flip everything but that one lining panel that we just sewn to the left the lining panels to the right and we're going to top stitch through that you can now bring these wrong sides together and you're going to kind of flip everything towards the top except for the bottom pocket panel and we are going to go ahead and that line that we have drawn we're going to fold it wrong sides together clip in place and then top stitch through just that bottom panel, making sure no other panel is in there. You can go ahead and change it to your regular foot now if you wanna do this.
such an amazing technique. So this is what that looks like now. So that seam, we're going to kind of match up where our lining seams meet and that's gonna bring the exterior up. So just like this, match up those lining seams and hold this in place like so. You can see that's creating that kind of vertical um, looking down hidden pocket. Just add a couple of clips to hold that in place for now. We're not gonna sew it just yet. Flip the exterior out of the way and sew through the bottom lining piece. And then you can flip the exterior down and you can top stitch or baste the sides up until that uh, where the zipper is after. So here we are, we're going across the bottom of the lining, flipping that exterior down and then just basting up the sides just slightly past where our zipper meets. You want to go about an eighth of an inch or so, so all the way up to here and a little bit past just to hold that folded up seam in place. Same with the opposite side. There are our uh, front zippers done. How wonderful does that look? I just loves it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our back panel. So similar to what we did with the front, I've done all of my markings as per the pattern. I'm putting my zipper pocket lining piece right sides together with the exterior um, back panel. And we are gonna go ahead and we are going to sew this exactly the way we did with the front zipper pocket, but we are not putting in a zipper flap for this one. So that is complete for our back panel. Now I'm gonna do my trolley sleeve. Make sure you have it orientated the right way. Fold it wrong sides together like this from bottom to top. And then we're just gonna sew that top seam with the seam allowance stated in the pattern. Once that is done, you can kind of trim up the corners without cutting your stitching and turn this tube right side out. Now, if you're doing a trolley sleeve here, you're going to finger press those seams really good and we are going to top stitch the top and the bottom of this. Now, if you are doing a slip pocket, only top stitch the top section um, because when you go to make it a slip pocket, you will be top stitching that bottom section. But I'm making a trolley sleeve, so I'm gonna top stitch both sides like so. I'm going to measure up from the bottom as per the pattern measurements for placement of my trolley sleeve. I'm gonna make sure it is nice and straight and I'm gonna clip the sides together. So for the trolley sleeve, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to base those two short sides in place. If you are making this a slip pocket, you would base down the short side, top stitch across the bottom and up the other short side. So you can decide what you wanna do, whether you want this to be a trolley sleeve or a slip pocket. So there's a trolley sleeve. And again, if you wanted a slip pocket, you would have just sewn across here and that would have closed up that bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna bring out those triangle rings. We're gonna make sure they are orientated properly so they kind of angle up towards the center top of the bag. I'm gonna mark up from the bottom on the right side as per the pattern measurements. And that is where we are going to place these triangle backpack connectors like so and baste those in place. Okay, so uh, that is done. Now what we wanna do is on our main panels, we want to draw our half inch boxes along the bottom. This is for putting it together later for our Y seams. Do the same on the back panel, just on the bottom sides, half inch squares. Now we're gonna work on our side pockets. So we're gonna find our top and bottom centers of our lining and exterior pieces. Keep in mind that the wider side of these side pocket pieces go to the top and the narrow sides along the bottom. Now we're gonna take our lining and our exterior pieces, put them right sides together like so, and along that top, we're gonna to go ahead and sew across there with the seam allowance and the pattern, flip these wrong sides together, and then top stitch along that top and baste the other three sides.
there's that done now on the bottoms well we want to mark on our side panels our top and bottom centers and along the bottom corners once again go ahead and mark on the wrong side your half inch boxes like so okay so now we're going to take our side panels and we're going to line up the bottom of our pocket with the bottom of our side panel and then we're going to base this in place these should be the same width right there but it will branch out and be a little bit wider closer to the top now we're going to bring in one side first of the raw edge like so clip in place and we're going to do the same with the opposite side and you're going to see that this is going to cause it to billow in the center which is exactly what we want as it is making room for whatever we may want to put in that side pocket once you have this clipped in place you're going to go ahead and you are going to just baste up those sides for both of the side panels Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach our all of our exterior panels and our um, laptop exterior pocket uh, piece with foam so go ahead and use your pattern pieces and clip it on there okay so these are all clipped together laptop piece you can go ahead and set that aside for all of the other exterior pieces we want to cut the foam one inch or so outside of these corners and this is just going to help us reduce bulk when we go to do our Y seams and when we go to do the the um, final stitch around so go ahead and do that on all four corners which we have done and then we are going to go ahead and we are going to stitch in between with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on all these sides except for those corners but the top and bottoms of our exterior main panels we are going to leave unbasted so again eighth of an inch in between all of the boxes like so so you can see I didn't top or didn't base the top of this we are going to cut the foam a half inch down from the top sides of our exterior pieces we are also going to cut the foam outside of those corners that we did not baste in place and again this is to reduce bulk in all of those seams and corners for when we do the final construction of the bag and also take the foam outside of where we will be putting our zipper at the top I like to use a little bit of double-sided tape on the back side of my sewing foam right at this top just to make it so it isn't flopping around now another thing I like to do, and you don't have to do this, but where this zipper pocket is, I'm going to kind of pull the foam away and make a snip, making sure I'm not cutting my exterior. And I like to cut my foam away from where the zipper pocket is so I can pull the zipper pocket onto the other side of the foam. So it just makes it a little bit more cushiony. Now you aren't able to do this with the bottom pocket, of course, because we've already basted it to the exterior, but that's okay. For this top pocket, I'm going to go ahead and do that trim the foam away just so it lies nice and flat against the foam go ahead and do that with the other one all my corners are cut out I have my zipper pockets out so that one is done do the same with the other ones cutting the foam outside of those corners okay so now we're going to take our um, strap connector pieces well this uh, what are these called these are called our strap strips uh, we're going to put uh, a line down the center of these and fold those long edges into the center. Next on our front and back main panels, you're going to do some markings as per the pattern measurements. Now we are doing this slightly different. So I've marked where the strap placement is in the pattern. And this is where I'm going to put my rectangle connectors and my O-ring on the back. So I'm putting a little bit of double-sided tape on the bottom and I am going to place these to the rectangle rings to the left and the right of the handle uh, placement marks where she tells you to do it in the pattern but right in the center here I made a center line and that is where I'm going to put my one and a half inch o-ring connector just like so pretty much just nice and centered at the same mark that she tells us to do our straps go ahead and base those in place now I put some double-sided tape on the back of my strap strip here and I am going to put that along the lines that we drawn like so make sure they are nice and straight and then we're going to top stitch along the top and bottom of that securing everything I've gone ahead and I put it in some rivets backed with some scraps of decal heavy I did the same for my front piece but I didn't put the o-ring there and I installed my nameplate as well 
So that is our front and back panels done. Okay, back to our side panels and putting in the modification of the cross body strap here. So I am measuring down, I think I measured down about one and a half inches, nice and centered. And where that line is, is where I'm going to line up where the uh, connectors fold goes around the D-ring there using some double-sided tape on the back. I'm also gonna measure down about a half inch to a three quarters of an inch down from my rectangle ring as well and draw a line. And then we're gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around there and going across that line that we drew. Once again, I'm pulling my strands long to tie off in the back. If you don't do this, make sure you back stitch at the start and stop well. crossbody straps done, I've gone ahead and put two rivets in, backed with some deckable heavy scraps as well. Okay, so now we're going to take our main zipper. On the wrong side of the right hand side of our zipper, I'm going to draw a one inch line. That'll help us put our zipper pull on nice and straight later on when the bag is done. On the opposite side, on the right side, we're going to go ahead and we are going to fold each of these ends down by at a 90 degree angle, I believe this with this is and secure with a pin. Do the same with the opposite side, making these as even as you possibly can. Take this to the machine and baste those curves in place. Paste it, go ahead and trim off the excess, making it nice and even with the rest of the zipper tape like so and pull your zipper tape apart. Okay, so I'm doing this a little bit different. So my measurements are three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches in from each side here because I'm not folding in those sides just yet as per the pattern. So follow my measurements if you're doing it my way. I'm gonna go ahead and use some double-sided tape in between those marks. So the shorter mark is on the left-hand side of our front panel and then the larger mark is on the right-hand side. I'm laying my tape down. This helps get a nice and straight non-wavy zipper if you use double-sided tape if your machine can handle it. Now we're going to take our zipper tape that curves to the left on this side, put it right sides together, starting it at that left-hand side mark. And when you get to the opposite mark on the opposite side, you're going to kind of mark where that mark is on the back side of your zipper tape and then veer it down like so, because we will not be catching those zipper tails in our seam. And just secure that with a clip. I'm gonna do the same on the back panel, except for the curvy side is going to start at the mark on the right. That way, when these are wrong sides together, they will be orientated properly and our zippers will match up perfect. So go ahead and do the same with that opposite side here. Once those are in place, you're going to put your zipper foot back on and you are going to sew across those with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, making sure you're not catching the tail of the zipper in your stitching where it veers off.
Okay, so that's done. So when you put these wrong sides together, your zipper should line up nicely, which mine does. Okay, so on our side panels from the top, we're gonna to go ahead and measure down as per the pattern measurements. If you are worried about the thickness of the sewn here, you can definitely cut the sewn out of this top area if you wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and put some double-sided tape here, and I'm going to fold that top short side into that line. Because I am keeping the foam in there, I'm also gonna put some clips there just to hold it in place. But again, you can definitely cut the foam out of that section as well if you're worried about that thickness. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take the side panel and we are going to put it right sides together with one side of our front panel, match up the bottom, and clip it all the way to the top. And you will see our side panel doesn't reach the whole top. It's kind of interesting because when we go to finish this where we have folded down those side panels, it's almost kind of done like a drop in lining without it being a drop in lining. And you will see what I mean once we get there. Once we have this done, we're going to sew with the seam allowance from the top of the side panel, stopping at where our little boxes were that we drew at the bottom at those half inch box lines. Do not go past that half inch box line at the bottom. You can go ahead and change into regular foot to sew the rest here. looks like done and you can see I didn't sew into the bottom there and our pockets line up nicely go ahead and do the same with the other side and also with the back panel so this is what our exterior looks like so far now we need to trim away some of this um, bulking so you want to make sure you are not trimming from three inches of the top I'm just going to make some marks so I know where to trim kind of more just in the middle side here trimming that seam allowance up um, just to about a quarter of an inch or so, but making sure you're not doing it from the top and the bottom. So you don't want to be catching your connectors there. You do not want to trim where your connectors were, and you do not want to trim the top three inches of the bag either. Do that for all four seams. Okay, so now we're going to take our bottom, and we're going to stick it in the bottom, right sides together, lining up that center mark, putting in a few clips, and then for those corners where we did not sew, you're gonna kind of fold them away like so, so you can match up the bottom of one of the main panels and the bottom of the bottom panel like so. Same with the other side. Again, you can kind of see how I fold those away like so, so I can bring those seams together. Then we're going to sew from the half inch box to the half inch box. making sure we are not catching that side panel in there as well. So where these half inch boxes are, it should make it so our seams match up perfect, perfectly from the sides to the bottom to the main panels, etc. Now that we have one side done, we're going to bring the other long side of our bottom exterior piece and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Making sure we're only sewing from half inch box to half inch box and making sure that our side panels are kind of tucked out of the way so we are not sewing through those. Need to close up those sides they should fit nice and snug again kind of pulling those seams out of the way so you can match up the side panels and the bottom panel like so and then we're going to sew across those from box to box again
double check that your seams all matched up, that they all meet at the corners, which mine do. And now we're going to trim these up. So you're going to kind of fold this down like this at these corners. And we are just going to trim on an angle like so without cutting our stitching just to reduce the bulk in those corners. This is one of the reasons why we cut the foam out of these corners is to make it so it's not too bulky. So make sure you're not cutting your, your uh, stitches because that would be bad news. Okay, I like to put my hand in here and just kind of poke into those corners to make sure they are all uh, there's no holes. And that is what our exterior looks like. You can put that aside for now. Now we are going to work with our laptop sleeve. We're going to go ahead and we are going to make sure it's orientated properly and clip the top and bottoms of these together. We're putting these together very similar to how we did our trolley sleeve on the back. So you're going to go ahead and you are going to sew with the seam allowance along the top and the bottom of this laptop sleeve. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to turn this tube through again and we are going to press out those top and bottom seams and we are going to go ahead and top stitch through both the top and the bottom. Again, this is not a closed bottom slip pocket. This is just a sleeve for your laptop as your laptop will be sitting with the bottom of your bag. Okay, now we're going to take our lining, um, uh, back lining piece. We are going to draw on the wrong side three quarters of an inch boxes along uh, the bottom. And on the right side, I've already gone ahead and made a line on the bottom of my lining for the placement of our laptop sleeve. So you're going to go ahead and right at that line, you are going to line up one of our um, raw edges. And very similar to how we did our side pockets, you're going to see that the laptop sleeve is slightly wider than our side panel. That is okay. We're going to go ahead and line up that side. And what this is doing is giving it a little bit of a billow to fit in the thickness of our laptops or whatever we will be putting in there. So it'll fit in there nice and snug, no matter how thick your laptop is. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and baste down those sides to hold that laptop sleeve in place. My other lining side, I've already gone ahead and I've done my slip pocket and my zipper pocket, leaving the bottom of my zipper pocket open. I've marked my uh, corners along the bottom. If you need classes on how I do those pockets, they're down below in the description. Next, we're going to work on our bottle sleeves, very similar to how we've done the other sleeves, is we are going to clip the bottom and the top together, sew across that top with the seam allowance and the pattern, turn our tube through and top stitch once again through the top and the bottoms creating our sleeves. So once that's done, you want to mark your three quarter inch squares along the bottom of our side panels. And then we want to draw a line from the top of our side panels, just like we did with our exterior with the measurement and the pattern. Use some double sided tape to fold that long, or that short edge into that line, just like we did with the exteriors. And then where I've made my marks, where the placement of my bottle sleeve is going to be, those are in the pattern. And just like we did with our laptop sleeve, you're going to match up those raw edges. And again, the bottle sleeve, of course, is wider than our side panel because we need to make room for that bottle when it is in that sleeve. I decided to do two with this, so I'm doing one on each side. So those are all basted in place and we have all of our lining panels done. We're going to go ahead and assemble this in the exact same fashion we did with the exterior, but we will be going with a, a seam allowance that is slightly different and we will not be sewing the bottom on just yet. So once we have the side panel in place, we are going to start at the top of this for about two and a half to three inches or so with a half inch seam allowance to about here, half inch seam allowance. And then we're going to branch out from that mark to a three quarters of an inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at that three quarter of an inch uh, box. Do the same with the other panels. So this is our lighting panel. Once again, we are going to trim just the center of this down. So make sure um, you only do this middle section here. It does say the pattern where you can clip this. So make sure you read that. Do that on all four. 
And then we're going to take our bottom lining panel and mark three quarters of an inch squares from each of the corners, but we are only going to sew on one long side of this. And this is just to hold it in place to make it easier when we go to sew the rest of the bottom on once the bag is almost fully put together. So clip on one long side. Um, I chose the side opposite from my zipper pocket. It doesn't really matter. Um, go ahead and sew from three quarters of an inch box from to the other three quarter inch box. Okay, so this is what that has. The bottom is completely open. Turn the lining right side out. Okay, so now along this top section here, these seams here, right on the sides, we want to fold them in by the seam allowance. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to hold those in. And I'm gonna do that on all four seams. because we will be top stitching these together with the exterior later on when we do our top stitching. So we want nice finished edges along those sides. You're gonna do the exact same thing with the exterior. So I have my side seams all folded in. We're going to go ahead and we are gonna take our lining, make sure it's situated so the laptop panel is right sides together with the back panel of the main. You're gonna stick them inside like this. First, you're gonna match up, we're only doing the two straight edges here. You're gonna match up that center with the lining and exterior and clip in place all the way across. We are not worried about the side panels yet. Make sure that those side sections that we have folded in by the seam allowance are nicely folded in. We need a nice finished seam there for top stitching later on. Clip all the way across. And you're gonna go ahead and do the same with the opposite side, matching up that center, making sure those side seams are all folded in and being held with that double-sided tape well. Match up those ends so they match up nicely, like so, those folded in seams. It's important they match up nicely, match up that center and clip across. Okay, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead, put our zipper foot on and sew across here with our quarter of an inch seam allowance on both sides. So we are not sewing the sides, we are only doing the two straight sides where the zipper is attached. So that is done. If you're happy with how straight that is, go ahead and put your lining up like this and turn your bag through the entire opening in the center of the bag. Now, 
because I used foam, it does take a little more effort to turn this through because the thickness is a little bit more, uh, but it really was an easy turn to turn through. So go ahead and turn it all the way through. turn through with the lining on the right side out if you're on a flatbed this is the perfect time to do um, some top stitching here as you can top stitch the exterior from the inside of the bag so you would just match up all of your side seams and everything hold them eclipse and top stitch all the way around I myself am going to go ahead and I'm going to take this to my cylinder arm so I'm going to turn the bag the rest of the way out so my exterior is on the opposite side but yeah, this is a good way to do it if you were doing it on a flatbed. So I'm gonna just continue going, turning this the rest of the way through to prepare for top stitching on my cylinder arm. Free arm, you could do the exact same thing. So make sure you are poking out all of your bottom corners to make sure they are all good. If you are uh, top stitched from the opposite way, if you're on your flatbed, of course, you would be doing this part after the fact, once you have everything top stitched together. I'm doing this before I do the top stitching just because I can. <laughs> so make sure all of those corner Y seams are poked out nicely. Mine look great. I'm also going to go ahead and press out all those seams with my hands and then I'm going to stick my lining inside the bag like so. So this is what I was saying where you're going to go ahead and on these side seams where we have everything um, uh, held down, the raw edges held down with double sided tape, you're going to make sure that your seams are going out like so. They are matching up where we folded in those side seams and you want to make sure they match up perfectly because we're going to top stitch along the zippers but these sides where they're open, it's almost like a drop in lining. So you got to make sure that those folded down raw edges line up perfectly with the exterior and the lining. So we know that when we go to top stitch this, we are catching both layers. So take your time to make sure everything lines up perfectly here. Lots of finger pressing, lots of clips to hold it in place. So to hold my seams in place along the uh, zipper, I like to use these extra large wonder clips that I got off of Amazon. It just helps hold it in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna top stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
that is all top stitched and making sure everything was caught it all looks good and it was now we can go ahead and we can finish off the bottom of the bag so we're going to pull out our zipper pocket reach in through the opening in our zipper pocket and pull the entire bottom of our lining up and through that zipper pocket now this is a little bit tough just because i do have some foam in that um laptop sleeve but it's completely doable once you have that bottom out, um, you want to match up the long side that we did not sew of that bottom piece with the opposite side uh, main panel, matching up the center and um, the edges like we did for the other bottom pieces. Again, make sure it is not twisted. You want to make sure this is all right sides together with no twists. You're going to clip this in place and you're going to sew from three quarters of an inch box to the three quarters of an inch box, just like we did with the opposite side for this long side. Okay, so that is done. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to close up the sides of the bottom. So kind of pull everything up and out of the way. And then sew on both of the sides from the three quarters of an inch box to the three quarters of an inch box to close up the bottom of the bag. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and trim up those corners just like we did with the exterior and trim up the seam allowances along all four sides. trimmed up go ahead and stuff the bottom back in through that zipper pocket make sure there's no holes it looks great and then you're going to take your zipper pocket make sure your raw edges are still folded down and go ahead and top stitch the zipper pocket closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance so go ahead and stuff your zipper pocket in like so make sure everything looks good And then next what we're going to do is we're going to line up those one inch lines we drew on the back of the zipper tape to put our zipper pull on nice and even which I've done. I've put my zipper end on. I've riveted my handles on. Just do another once over. The bag is done you guys. Look how amazing it is. Pat yourself on the back. It's not a hard sew. Such a satisfying sew. Um, this is where that um, crossbody strap if you have it at its widest or longest length you can loop it through to make a backpack strap or you can make it a shoulder strap or a crossbody strap completely making this backpack into a convertible bag anyways pat yourself on the back admire your work she is so pretty there's my trolley sleeve and we're done all right that's it that's all i really hope you guys loved this tutorial i hope you love the the modifications i did to make this bag my own make sure you do share it on my facebook page if you do make this bag anyways if at any time you did like this tutorial please do give me a thumbs up if you haven't already please do subscribe if you'd like to support my channel further you can always find me a coffee that's linked down below in the description and if you'd like check out my membership side of the channel and just in case there's something there that sparks your interest too anyways until the next one bye